Are we running out of time to stop an environmental catastrophe in the Amazon, home to one million indigenous peoples and three million different plant and animal species? Deforestation is on the rise, and criticism is mounting of Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro, who did not attend the recent UN climate conference in Glasgow, Scotland. Is there still hope that the rainforest can be saved? I'll ask executive director at Amazon Watch, Leila Salazar Lopez, an agronomist and senior fellow of Ashoka, Luis Fernando Guerres Pinto. Uh, Leila, I'm going to start with you. In November, deforestation in the Amazon hit the highest annual level in 15 years. The, the rainforest lost 13,235 square kilometers from August of 2020 through July of 2021. That's an area 17 times the size of New York City. Uh, and yet, only nine years ago, Brazil had achieved what was a remarkable feat. It reduced deforestation by 84%. Uh, from a historical peak back in 2004. So what happened? Yes, uh, unfortunately, the Amazon rainforest is, is facing an uh, incredible uh, amount of threats, including deforestation. Um, according to our friends at Greenpeace, the Amazon, Brazilian Amazon lost the equivalent of three soccer fields every minute. And it's, it's because of the increasing threats to the Amazon rainforest and its peoples. Um, threats including industrial activity, industrial agribusiness, mining, and land grabbing. Um, and this is as a result of the government policies that incentivize the destruction of the Amazon rainforest, the world's largest and most bioculturally diverse tropical rainforest on our planet. Um, this, this deforestation and degradation, both legal and illegal, is causing an emergency in the Amazon and therefore an emergency in our global climate. Luis Fernando, uh, in October, activists uh, submitted a petition to the International Criminal Court to hold Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro uh, criminally responsible for the, quote, ruthless assault on the Amazon. That included deforestation and ongoing crimes against humanity. Uh, do you agree with that petition? Yes, unfortunately, I agree. The fact is that our president uh, doesn't see any value in the forest, in the people of the forest, or in nature itself. Uh, this administration is skeptical of science, is skeptical of climate change. So they are supporting policies that actually threat life threat forests, threat indigenous people, threats our economy, not only in the local and the national level, but also internationally, because Brazil is a key country in terms of climate change, but also in terms of uh, protecting, conserving freshwater and biodiversity. So all these positions, species and uh, decisions from uh, Bolsonaro really impact life in the, in the global level, and they des he deserves to be judged by that. Uh, Bolsonaro has been called, uh, quote, the Amazon's worst enemy by environmental mm -hmm. and social groups. But deforestation certainly uh, didn't begin under him, Luis Fernando. Uh, Brazil's progress uh, has been stalling for years, including under former President Rousseff. Since uh, 2000, rainfall has declined by 69 percent across the Amazon, and a Worldwide Fund for Nature, the WWF, estimates that 27 percent of the biome will be without trees by the year 2030 if the current rate of deforestation uh, continues. How hopeful are you about Brazil's chances of saving the rainforest? Well, we are very hopeful because we know it's possible to control deforestation, not only in the Amazon, but in the Atlantic Forest for Pantanal, Cerrado, or other Brazilian ecosystem. Even As given you, you said, you said it, you're hopeful because it's possible. Even given all the circumstances, all the political leanings, all the realities that precede even Bolsonaro, you're still hopeful. I mean, that's encouraging, but surprising a bit. No, in the very short term, it's impossible. With our current president, it will never happen. So I'm I'm hopeful for the future. Uh, Bolsonaro, uh, very luckily, will not going to be reelected from 2022. You're going to have a new president. I'm hopeful because we have science, we have knowledge, and we learn it how to control deforestation. I'm not saying it's simple and not saying it's easy, 
but it's possible if we have the political will, the commitment from our government, from companies, from our civil society, not only from Brazil, but internationally, if we have the resources, we can really dramatically and sharply decrease deforestation for the benefit of Brazilians and the planet as a whole. Leila, according to your organization, Amazon Watch, the big money drivers behind uh, deforestation are BlackRock, BNP, uh, JP Morgan Chase, uh, HSBC, uh, and Santander, while the middlemen are Cargo Soy, uh, JBS Beef, and Marfrig Beef. There are, of course, other retailers that we could mention, Walmart, uh, Costco. Uh, they're also contributing to the problem, according to your research. Uh, could you explain exactly how these companies are driving deforestation? Yes, if we if we look at the key drivers of deforestation, uh, if we look at the land grabbing, if we look at the logging, both legal and illegal, the mining, um, and we look at the agribusiness expansion, and we're talking about Brazil in particular, um, we go back to the source. What's what's driving this? What's causing this? Um, one, it's government policy um, that allows this. Two, it's the corporations that are driving this destruction, the, the car grills, the ADMs, the bungies, the Marfrigs of the world. Um, but they are not alone. They are backed by money. Is there anything that I can do or that you can do or that everyday citizens in general can do in response to this? Can individual consumer of actions course. do anything about that? Of course. Um, BlackRock, for example, um, isn't, you know, isn't on every corner like J.P. Morgan chases. But J uh, BlackRock invests in almost every company you can think of. So um, you could look at the companies that um, you are invested in or your, you know, your um, retirement fund is invested in, and you can ensure that those companies are not tied to BlackRock. You could ask your, your financial manager about so, that. So being mindful of where are, our— uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but being mindful of where our investments are— uh, exactly. And the relationship between our consumer choices and the companies that are leading the charge against deforestation. That, that makes sense to me. L Luis Fernando, I want to pivot for a moment, uh, because for decades, indigenous peoples from the Amazon have been forced uh, from their homes. Uh, a report d details uh, genocide, torture, rape, and enslavement of indigenous tribes under Brazil's military dictatorship. It's believed that some tribes were entirely wiped out. Now, today, they continue to face attacks, killings, land theft, and violent territorial disputes with cattle ranchers and farmers. Uh, is solving this problem something that can happen from within Brazil, or do we need international attention? Well, international attention is important. Of course, the decisions need to be made in Brazil by Brazilians. We are talking about Brazilian citizens, which have their rights. Indigenous people have the top rights uh, in our constitution. What's going on in Brazil now is really about our government not respecting our constitution, the rights of our people, uh, but we have also the international spaces to deal with countries. So, as you said, in the United Nations, in some courts, Brazilian government is, is it will be judged for what's doing and has done in the past. So, we really need all these international uh, structures to function well, and they don't function well, unfortunately. So if there is a bad function of our Brazilian democracy and our Brazilian government, internationally it's not working as well. And we need all these things working well to really uh, defend and protect our indigenous groups from this very uh, bad interests that are now uh, leading our government. Uh, Leila, Amazon Watch recently reported that the home of Brazilian indigenous leader and human rights defender uh, Alessandra Karap Munduruku uh, was invaded after she returned from this year's climate summit in Glasgow. Uh, a record number of 227 environmental activists were reported killed last year around the world, uh, with 121 recorded killed in Brazil alone between 2017 and 2020, according to the watchdog group Global Witness. Uh, what kind of response should we be seeing from the Brazilian government? Well, first and foremost, um, you know, unfortunately, the Brazilian government is one of the perpetrators of these attacks and actually, um, you know, incentivizes land grabbing, incentivizes attacks, uh, threats and attacks on indigenous peoples who are protecting their lands, their rights, their livelihoods, their territories, and are 
are defending um, the Constitution, which guarantees their their rights uh, to free, prior, and informed consent, their rights to their territories. What's happening in Brazil right now? Um, you know, if you speak to any indigenous leader, where whether it is Alessandra Munduruku or Sonia Wajajara or any of the, you know, the leaders from the indigenous movement or in local communities, they will say that they are facing an ethnocide, an ecocide, and a genocide. That's what's happening in Brazil right now. And I would be remiss to not mention the reason why our indigenous allies and indigenous peoples in Brazil and across the Amazon are saying this is an ethnocide and this is an emergency. It's because of these uh, threats and attacks directly on um, on the rights, lives, and territories of indigenous peoples. But it's also because of the COVID crisis. The government allowed the COVID-19 uh, variant to spread, which makes Brazil now the third most highest rate of um, COVID deaths in the world. Wow. Luis, uh, is what we're seeing right now reversible? What would it take to bring the rainforest back? Uh, it's reversible. Again, uh, I think we need to be optimistic. What's needed? We need a strong coordination. Uh, coordination uh, among federal, state, and municipal levels, across uh, ministries, across the justice, the Congress, and our legislative systems. We need to understand that all these threats, if we reverse it, they, can, they may become opportunities opportunities of economic development for these local uh, communities, but also for many other entrepreneurs. So we need incentives to have a, a green economy, to have a forest economy, not only for large companies, but also for very local communities. So it's, it's complex, but it's achievable because we have hundreds of experiences on how to, to take care of the forest, to make money from the forest, we can reverse by first stopping deforestation by control, fiscalization, punishing uh, crime and illegality, and building this very positive agenda of incentives. We have a lot of evidence that stopping these predatory uh, activities are necessary to protect biodiversity, the climate and the water, and to promote wealth for all. Leila, I'll give you the last word. What can you add to that? What else is needed to bring the rainforest back? So the Amazon is life. If I leave you with anything, I, will, I, I would love for everyone to recognize that the Amazon rainforest the biome, the basin is life. And we still have time to turn around the tipping point. The Amazon is at a tipping point of ecological collapse at this time, but we still have time if we if we put all our energy and forces together to call for the permanent protection of the Amazon rainforest and the recognition demarcation and titling of indigenous people's lands and as Juma Shipaya uh, from the Shingu region recently said just at COP26 um, that it is about gathering funds and supporting indigenous peoples and investing in the protection of the Amazon rainforest. But it's not just about money, because money is actually one of the reasons why we're in this problem. It is also about basic respect for indigenous peoples, for forest peoples. It's about respect for, for people and for our planet. And if we do that, then we can protect the rainforest and we can protect our climate for climate justice for all of us. Leila, Luis Fernando, thank you both so much for joining me on Upfront.